We will continue, inshallah, with uh, tafsir. Alaykum salam. Anyone who said salam, alaykum salam. Brother Salim, Brother Abdullah, Sister Katsum, Iqbal, Brother Ahmed. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Sister Judith, Sister Rajia, and anyone who said salam, wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah. We will continue with uh, Sayyidina Ibn Kathir's tafsir of Juz Amma. Um, we reach to Surat Al Duha. We will try to finish, inshallah, before the end of Ramadan. Al Duha, Ustaid Billah, Awad Billah, Mishnah Rajim, Bismillah, Rahman Rahim, Al Duha, Wal Layli, Ida Saja, Ma Wadaka Rabuka, Ma Kola, Wal Layla Khira to Khirun Laka Min Al Ula, Wal Sofa Yartika Rabuka Fatarda. ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما الشائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث It's a surah that most of us recite often in our prayer Allah is swearing by the duha by the forenoon duha time is when the sun rises up to zawal up to the time of Dhuhr prayer, that's Duha. Wallayli ida saja, and by the darkness, by the night, when it takes over. Saja means when it, when it is, when it spreads. Sayyidina Ibn Abbas uh, said, the reason for this uh, nuzul, this ayat, is that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was receiving the revelation and then there was inqita'ah there was a time where Sayyidina Jibreel didn't come for a short while and that was very heavy on Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu so and there's many different variations there's a story also of a woman who used to hear Prophet Sallallahu pray and then there was a few nights uh, reciting the, the, the new revelation the new night that uh, he didn't pray for a sickness or an illness and she came to Prophet and said oh she was an unbelieving unbelieving woman so she said oh your devil uh, left you uh, something like that Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas saying that the revelation was cut for a few days and then the unbelievers started to taunt Sayyidina Muhammad and the believers that he has been uh, that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that uh, uh, was forsaken by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala خلاص يعني Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala left him to himself and that Allah hates him huh? so Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is answering these claims وَالضُّحَى وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَعَ he swears by the forenoon and by the night when it spreads the darkness مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not forsaken you nor does he hate you. وَلَلْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى And the eternity, akhira, is better for you than this dunya. And we all know Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his teaching was always zuhd in dunya. Hmm? مِنَ الْأُولَى Prophet ﷺ was given the choice to be a, like Sayyidina Sulaiman, to be a king and a, and a messenger, or to be a, a abd and a messenger. And he chose to be a abd, a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and a messenger. And we all know that uh, the Allah sent him the angel of the mountains, saying that if you wish we will turn the mountains around Mecca the mountain of Uhud will turn it into gold uh, for you and Prophet ﷺ was not interested in the wealth of this dunya ta'aliman lana teaching us teaching us that he Prophet ﷺ who had in his grasp 
to own this whole world if he choose to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turn mountains into gold for him huh? but he was not interested and we all know the the generosity of Prophet there no one exceeds him in perfection of generosity that he left nothing whatever came in he gave that that the people the uh, he was given people you'd say one of the one of the people at that time saw saw uh, uh, a valley full of camels and uh, sheep and so forth and prophet and he was saying oh how nice it is he says you like it he said it's yours prophet sallallahu was like that with given Huh? that they used to go to their people and say become a Muslim because pro this messenger of Allah he gives uh, that he gives the, in a way of a person who is never fearing shortage huh? the imdad Allah's imdad to him is continuous this dunya was created for him sallallahu so he was like that with giving and Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is mentioned here in a hadith that he came, Imam Ahmad recorded that Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud he came to see the Prophet وسلم, and found him lying down on a straw mat that left marks on his side right? straw uh, on the hard floor so when he rose, when he woke up he began to rub his side and it not only left a mark, it was also irritating him so uh, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, O Messenger of Allah, will you allow us? Let us to spread something for you, cushion of some sort, to soft over this straw mat. And he replied, Salawatu Rabbi wa salamu alayhi, Mali walid dunya, inama mathali wa mathalu dunya karaki bin dhalla, tahta shajaratin thumma raha wa taraka. He said, <laughs> Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud saying, let us get you a, a soft cover to put on top of the straw mat. Huh? How many of us today, we, uh, we, uh, we are not happy with uh, any, just any bed, you know, is it soft bed, is it hard bed, is it uh, how, how much uh, cushion, does it take the shape of your body now? Huh? so many uh, the comforts that are available and we know people are so uh, spoiled that they go deep into the science of how to make ourselves more comfortable you know ergonomic uh, seats um, desks uh, that uh, rise and fall uh, endless uh, uh, time spent and money and energy into our comfort and this is your Prophet وسلم, was lying down on a straw mat and when told let us put something soft he said Mali walid dunya. he said what do I have to do with this with the comforts of this dunya with this world with dunya huh? with this lowly life existence he said my example innama mathali wa mathal dunya my example and the example of this world we live in, this dunya, is like a person traveling, karakibin, he's riding, and he wanted to take a break from riding, found a tree, came down, laid down for an hour or two to rest himself underneath the tree. Uh, that tree, Prophet وسلم, resembled that station, that stop on the way, resembles this world for our souls uh, this is not where we this is not where we came from and this is not where we will eternally stay this is just only a step a station the prophet is teaching us don't invest what all the gifts Allah gave you and the favors in something that is transient and temporary something that you're not even meant to Consider it an abode, a place of stay. Thumma raha wa taraka. And then after that he got up and continued on his journey. This is just a, 
a resting place. Uh, the destination is Akhirah. وَلَا الْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى And verily, eternity, Akhirah is better for you than this temporary world. وَلَا سَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى And verily, your Lord will continue to give you until you are happy. Huh? This is something that we should be happy, this verse is we should be so hopeful with this verse we should be so happy Allah is saying to Prophet verily I will continue to give you until you are satisfied and we know that Prophet Sallallahu concern was for his Ummah Ummati Ummati he cried for his Ummah he worried for his Ummah he worried for us he wanted us all to be saved okay? He's praying for us in every prayer. The Prophet what it, what it, all the sins. So you Prophet وسلم, He is mercy to you and to us and to me and to whole world. When Allah is saying, I will give you until you are satisfied. You think Prophet وسلم, will be happy if any member of his ummah is uh, not entering heavens so this is something for us to be happy and Prophet That this verse, uh, he sallallahu alaihi wasallam has prepared for him from his generosity. That from this will be a river of kawthar. This is in tafsir, which will have domes and hollowed pearls on its banks, and the mud on its blanks, on its banks will be the strongest fragrance of mus musk. As will be mentioned, Imam Abu Amr al Awzaj recorded that Ibn Abbas said that the Messenger of Allah was shown that which his Ummah would be blessed with after him, treasures upon treasures, and he was pleased with that. So, here again, the tafsir is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant Prophet so much abundant grants and gifts that he will be given to his ummah and that is for example shafa'ah uh, on judgment this is ata the prophet sallallahu uh, the kawthar from which anyone who drinks from the kawthar will never be thirst ever uh, imagine thirst ever and even um, the last one from his ummah that is will will uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, bring him out from hell to and he will uh, be watered by the water of the kawthar and he will sprout back and be entered into heaven verily Allah will give you until you are satisfied did he alam fa'awa did he not find you an orphan and and he found you shelter and refuge Huh? And here the author is saying that this refers to the fact that both of Prophet's parents left dunya before, while he was uh, young and that he was taken care of by his grandfather and then by his uncle Abu Talib uh, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًّا فَهَدَى And here the author is saying that and he found you misguided and he found you unaware and guided you. ضال and he, some of the tafsir unaware or lost. I like the tafsir uh, that uh, does not have any negative connotation that uh, 
Yusri Jabur, Allah bless him, he said that here Dalan does not mean misguidance or does not mean lost. It, it means bewildered. He found you bewildered in Allah's love. Lost in Allah's love. And uh, he uh, uses the verse uh, from Sayyidina Allah Sayyidina Muhammad uh, Sayyidina Ya'qub uh, Allah uses in the Holy Quran when when Sayyidina Ya'qub was crying for Sayyidina Yusuf uh, and he said Yusuf. I'm smelling the smell of Yusuf he was so in love with Sayyidina Yusuf uh, Sayyidina Ya'qub the, his children says like innaka lafi dalalik al qadim they use dal dalal they use that for infatuation for love excessive love bewildering love dal so i like it to be i like i like that tafsir that allah found you bewildered in his love oceans and he guided you wa kadhalika awhayna ilayka ruhan min amrina and he found you عائل, um, he found you poor and made you rich also the tafsir also in Sheikh Yusuf Jabr's ta'wil of this verse and I think Sheikh Abdul Ba'ith al-Kiptani that he found you poor and he reached you there's uh, Sheikh Yusri uh, Allah bless him says that عائل not عائل could mean Ya'ul, yani. A'il could mean somebody who is receiving or A'il somebody who is giving. So he found you in need or he found you satisfying the needs. So he found you uh, as Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam is, he says, Ana qasim wallahu yu'ti. I divide and Allah gives. So this meaning here that he found you Ta'ul al-Akwan means he found you supporting uh, creations and he gave you support and madad, he made you rich to continue to give. Hmm? And here the author, the, the, the literal meaning is saying that he found you in need and he made uh, enriched you. Prophet Sallallahu talked about ghina he said, "Laysa al-ghina an kathrati al-arad, walakin al-ghina ghina nafs." That to be rich is not because you have too many things, but it's to be rich with within yourself, uh, to be aziz, to be a person who feels like he owns, he's in need, he has Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, he's in need in, of no one. And he, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, said, "Qad aflaha man aslama." وَرُزِقَ كَفَافًا وَقَنَّعَهُ اللَّهُ بِمَا أَتَى He said, صلى الله عليه وسلم, and these hadith are quote, quoted in the tafsir, he said, successful is he who became a Muslim, and Allah granted him rizq just enough, enough to live with dignity and not ask people, kafafa. And he made you satisfied with that. Hmm? With that, what is given him? Prophet Sallallahu said, that one is successful. فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرْ As for the orphan, uh, do, not, uh, Allah, do not oppress the orphans, meaning, and this is not for Prophet Sallallahu this teaching for, uh, for the Ummah, that Prophet himself was the, 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 the most merciful towards the needy and the orphans. So this is a teaching for the Ummah not to oppress the orphans. Do not humiliate them. Do not scorn them. Do not despise them. Huh? You should be gentle with the orphan. Qatada said, be like a merciful father to an orphan. As for those who are asking, Sail. Uh, do not uh, reject their request. Uh, if these people coming to ask you, ask you anything, uh, respond. Uh, here, uh, Qatada is saying the seeker of knowledge was asking you, 
Ibn Ishaq also said, Do not repulse them, do not reject them. And there says, this means do not be oppressive, arrogant, wicked, or mean to the weak among Allah's servants. Qatada said, this means respond to the poor with mercy and gentleness. Uh, again, this is this is addressed to us, uh, the Ummah of Prophet ﷺ, because Prophet has perfection of manners. Even before Islam, when he came to Sayyidah Khadija, the first the early days of revelation and he said he was shaking and he said cover me cover me and he was worried that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, forsaken him and Sayyidah Khadija said Allah will never forsake somebody like you you took it life you're generous to your guest you help the weak you feed the poor and so forth this is even before Islam so these this is addressed to the Ummah that look after the weak, look after the orphans, do not uh, return uh, people who are asking you. And Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad uh, with favors, with your Lord's favors, make them uh, speak about your Lord's favors. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad and pro proclaim the grace of your Lord your Lord's generosity uh, here yani, the meaning is to tell about you, the favors Allah give you Sayyidina Abu Dawood recorded that Abu, Abu Huraira that Prophet Sallallahu said لا يشكر الله من لا يشكر الناس that those who don't think Allah think those who don't thank people do not thank Allah huh? you thank the people as means Allah used for you for that favor to reach you but you still thank them you don't think that the favor is coming from them but you thank them and Prophet ﷺ said whoever uh, that whoever whoever overcomes some trial or test or calamity and mentions it then he has thanked Allah for it and whoever conceals it so Allah saves you from something from a difficulty from a hardship say alhamdulillah subhanallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, remove that difficulty remove that sickness from us huh? and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is thanking Allah don't act like nothing happened Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, now chapter 94, and that is Alam Nashrah Laka Sadrak, Surah Sharh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alam Nashrah Laka Sadrak, wa wada'ana anka wizrak, al-lazhi anqada dhaharak, wa rafa'ana laka dhikrak, fa inna ma'al usri yusra, inna ma'al usri yusra, fa idha faraghta fansab, wa idha rabbika faraghab. Did we not expand your chest? Did we not open your chest? Hmm? Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, did we not remove your burden, which was heavy on your back? Uh, and we, did we not raise your mention? And here, one of the meanings of have we not expanded your chest is did we not illuminate it? Did we not made it spacious and white? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, it's a metaphor also. A uh, person with si'at al-sadr, it is given for somebody who is halim, who is generous, um, uh, who is uh, patient, who is accommodating and accepting. فَمَا يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيهِ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever Allah wants to guide, He will expand His chest for Islam. وَوَضَعْنَا عَنْكَ وِزْرَكَ And we put 
remove from you your burden. Huh? And here the tafsir is Allah he uses that Prophet's burden and his sin. Prophet is infallible. He he doesn't have any sin to account for. So his burden is not his sins, his burden is his ummah. Yeah, and he's, what, what worried him, what saddened him, what uh, made him uh, cry was concern for his nation. That if there's any sins that he's carrying, it's the sins, uh, our sins. That's it, what was burdening his back. Which weighed down your back. الذي أنقض ظهرك فإن مع العسر يسرى ورفعنا لك ذكرك and, and we raised your mention until judgment day Anytime we say La ilaha illallah, Muhammad, Rasulullah. He made his mention with his mention. You can't say the Shahada unless you mention Prophet ﷺ. Not only that, believers are under obligation and order to make salawat on him. Even Sayyidina Adam, when he was in the heaven, and he ate from the tree and he asked Allah's forgiveness. It is said that he asked for the sake of Prophet Muhammad. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Who taught you about Prophet Muhammad? Who do, how do you know him? He said, Everywhere I looked in the heavens, I found his name uh, in the heavens. Salawat wa rabbi wa salamu alayhi. Wa rafa'na laka dhikrak. And we have raised your mention. Salawat wa rabbi wa salamu alayhi wa alayhi. فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ Severity with difficulty there is ease. With difficulty there is ease. So whenever you have time, whenever you have, you find yourself free, فَانْصَبْ means whenever you find yourself free, then run to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worship Him, serve Him uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here there is something, إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى that with difficulty there is ease, with difficulty there is easy. Ulama, linguistically, Allah says, Inna ma' al usri yusra. Inna ma' al usri yusra. And al alif lam is used for some something known. Inna ma' al usri. So ulama said from this that there is one usr with one difficulty, one usr, there are two eases. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for one difficulty, He sent you twice the ease. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ وَإِلَى رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ And run to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever you find yourself free and able. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad. We will end up here, inshaAllah. Thank you all who join us.